Why are more and more women shaving their facial hair? What does PCOS have to do with chin hair? And is there really a such thing as permanent hair removal? Hi, I'm Dr. Inky and today we'll be diving into a topic that is affecting millions of people all around the world silently, female facial hair. However, before I break the silence and go into myth busting, we were looking at some of our analytics and we realized that most of the people watching this particular video are not subscribers to the channel. So if you wouldn't mind just clicking the subscribe button, it will help us grow the channel tremendously and allow us to create more videos like this for people like yourself. Good day, I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor and welcome to my channel where by today we'll be breaking the myths and breaking the silence regarding female facial hair. So first up, what is facial hair in women? All of us have hair on our face, both male and females. And majority are really fine hair which you can't really see with your naked eyes and these are called villous hair, otherwise known as baby hair. But this particular villous hair becomes darker and more visible as it approaches certain areas like above the lips, below the lips, around the chin, and around the jawline. So in males, we call it things like mustache and beards. But if this male distribution happens in female, we call it hirsutism. Hirsutism affects roughly about 5 to 11% of the global female population. That means it's actually normal in every one out of 20 females. However, in women with PCOS, otherwise known as polycystic ovarian syndrome, that particular number jumps up to 70%, otherwise known as 7 out of 10 women would have hirsutism. So what are the global trends around facial hair? Do you know that women with South Asian descent means if they originate from places like India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, and women in the Middle East are more prone to having thicker facial hair? This is due to their genetics. Facial hair also affects women of the Mediterranean descent. And all of this is because of genetic predisposition and as well as hormone sensitivity. Do you know in US, roughly about 15% of women shave their facial hair regularly? That means nearly one out of every five women actually shave their hair. And in Japan, up to 40% of women actually use electric razors to remove their facial hair. In many places like South Asia and Southeast Asia, the go-to method to remove facial hair is a method called threading. And in North America, they typically lean towards dermaplaning or lasers. So why do facial hairs actually grow in women? The most common cause is hormonal imbalance. In some women, there's an elevated amount of androgens. These are otherwise known as sex hormones. These sex hormones, primary testosterone, actually thickens the hair on the face. And one of the most common cause is PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS disrupts ovulation, changes your hormone, and brings around symptoms like irregular period, infertility, acne, and most importantly, facial hair. Of course, there are other causes of thick facial hair, which we mentioned earlier, things like genetics. If you're on certain medications like minoxidil, in someone who's actually obese, and in certain cases, we have no idea and we call it idiopathic hirsutism. It means that the doctors have no idea why the facial hair is growing thick in the first place. Hey, before I continue with this particular video, I just want to ask you, are you currently suffering from facial hair and what have you done to reduce or remove your facial hair? Let me know in the comments below. So what is the social impact? To be honest, a lot of women do not like facial hair, especially if you're cursed above the lips or on the chin. In a study done around London women, 40% of women with facial hair says that it's socially unacceptable and 75% of women reported anxiety due to facial hair. So facial hair isn't just a cosmetic issue, it's actually a mental health issue. And it's not being helped by the growth of social media, primarily TikTok and Instagram, where women look flawless. So what are the hair removal options in the market? There are a few temporary methods that you can remove facial hair. The first is the HO shaving using just a blade or a razor. It's quick, it's painless, and there is a myth that every time you shave your hair, it comes out thicker. That is definitely not true. Another way is threading or tweezing, whereby the roots of the hair are actually plucked from the skin. And these are great for the places like the eyebrows and the upper lips. And the hair only typically grows back every two to four weeks, so there is actually ample time in between. Other temporary methods are like waxing and sugaring. They both remove the roots of the hair from the skin and the hair typically grows back every three to four weeks. However, this method can be a little bit uncomfortable and painful for some people. And of course, there are hair removal creams, which you apply on your skin, and what they do is they soften and melt off the hair, and the hair naturally falls off. 
And one of the methods becoming more and more popular is known as dermaplaning. This is where they use an ultrasonic razor to remove the facial hair without the pain and it's quick. However, if you want your facial hair not to grow back so quickly, you need to opt for some medical options. The first is either laser hair removal or intense pulse-like therapy, otherwise known as IPL. What it does is the heat will actually destroy the roots of the hair so that subsequent generation of hair that grows back grows back finer and slower. With the increased amount of laser hair removal clinics and salons in the market, laser hair removal is becoming more and more popular. However, if you're suffering from hormonal changes like PCOS, you might require some sort of hormonal therapy. Typically, people with PCOS are put on hormonal options like spironolactone or oral contraceptive pills to regulate the amount of androgens that their body produces. And that, over time, helps manage the amount of facial hair that they grow. So managing facial hair is not about removing the facial hair, but it's about managing your mental health. End of the day, women just want to feel like they have control over their body. So the final question that we need to answer is, can hair be permanently removed? The answer, surprisingly, is yes, but with a few caveats. The best way is laser hair removal. It's because not only do you remove the hair that's on the skin, but every subsequent generation of hair actually becomes smaller and finer, and there have been cases whereby the hair doesn't actually grow back after multiple sessions of laser. So don't be fooled by someone claiming that they can permanently remove your hair within three to five sessions, because typically laser hair removals take anywhere between seven to 10 sessions to really get rid of most of the hair on your body and on your face. And if you pair that with hormonal regulations like spironolactone or oral contraceptive pills, you'll be able to see results much quicker. So in conclusion, the truth of the matter is, Removing facial hair isn't just a cosmetic thing. It is actually empowering the women who silently suffer from thick, coarse facial hairs. So thank you so much for watching this particular video. If you like this video, please do subscribe. Please click the like button and turn on the bell button because we release new videos on a weekly basis. That's it from me. I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor. And always remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay informed.